Hello, everybody. So to follow up on the Purpose of Emotions episode and the We Are Always Feeling Something episode, this episode is We Feel What We Believe. By this, I mean that, you know, like emotional responses, I keep saying, are like sensory responses. Um, we feel what we are perceiving, what we know around us, um, what we're processing cognitively at the moment. Um, all of this happens in an instant, all the time, it's always going on, um, and we're not typically conscious of it. But we feel what we believe. One of the best examples is someone pointing a gun to our head. Obviously, if we're walking down a street or a road and someone pops out and points a gun at our head, we're going to have an intense fear response, what I call a survival fear response. However, if the situation, the context is different, like a young child is pointing a toy gun at our heads, different situation. We may feel a little bit of a fear, background fear, certainly it may be annoyance like, hey, don't do that, don't ever do that. But it's an entirely different case because our belief system is real dangerous, real gun, I think, this guy popping out, I'm in, gonna die, versus toy gun, I know it's a toy gun, or I'm pretty sure it's a toy gun, and it's a different thing. So our belief of what that gun is, then we feel what that belief is about the gun. Another example is if you know, someone tells us that they love us. So let's think about this. When someone in, you're with says, I love you, if you believe, you really believe that they love you, they, you feel that they love you, and you feel the loving connection, which is a joy response. It's happiness, it's fulfillment, and all that stuff. However, if someone says, I love you, but you know, you just don't believe it. It's just like, that doesn't quite make sense. Could be all subconscious, not in your conscious awareness, but all subconscious. You're not gonna feel the joy. You might even feel some anger, maybe some sadness, but I mean, it's like, yeah, I don't believe it, don't feel it. So those are two classic examples of what we, we, we feel what we believe, or in other words, what's going on in the context, coming at us, what we're perceiving, is then what we feel from it. Whether it's that fear situation with a gun or the love situation or not, when someone says, I love you. This understanding, actually discovery, uh, is really important uh, in therapy. It's, it's the backdrop, background of the most common type of treatment that we do, which is cognitive therapy. Our goal as therapists is to help people feel, uh, to create different beliefs. Um, quite simply to move from negative beliefs to positive beliefs. And then when that happens, people move from negative emotions to positive emotions about themselves and their lives and their worlds. It's that cognitive shift is what we're looking for almost most of the time when we do psychotherapy, mental health treatment because the cognitive shift causes the emotional shift. We don't do it just for the heck of it, like, oh, let's change what you're thinking. That's not the point. The point is then people feel differently when we move from negative beliefs to positive beliefs. We move from negative emotions to positive emotions. One of the best examples of that is to help a woman know that it's not her fault, that her partner is abusing her. The belief system often perpetuated by the abuser or the perpetrator is you deserve this. You're supposed to get this. No one else is gonna love you. You gotta stay where you are and take it basically. So if a person, often women, come to our office and talk about that, we're gonna help them realize no, it's not your fault. You do not deserve it. You do not have to stay. So changing that entire belief system helps the person feel better emotionally, feel more hope, hopefully less fear, and typically, hopefully, to feel empowered to leave that situation. 
So that is classic cognitive therapy, switching beliefs, which then switch, improve emotions, and then perhaps, hopefully, actions to leave that situation. Finally, this understanding or discovery is absolutely key to treating anxiety and depression. Uh, to me, it's fundamental in what I do in treating anxiety and depression because part of anxiety is fearing the fear and part of depression is feeling sadness about the sadness. So when helping people understand fear is a normal natural response and that sadness is a normal natural response, then they stop and hopefully at some point never fearing the fear or feeling sadness about the sadness. That is a key component to the cognitive treatment of anxiety and depression that we do. And as I certainly focus on in my practice because I'm always talking about the um, fundamental uh, emotions, the primary emotions, joy, anger, fear, and sadness, why they exist. They're all natural, normal, and healthy. And it's a key part of how I treat people who come into this office, to my office, to be treated for anxiety and or depression. And by the way, they often go together. It's, you know, most people have the leading edge of anxiety and then they feel depressed or sad about all that fear they're feeling all the time. But more on that later. But it's a key part of how uh, I treat anxiety and depression is eliminating fear of fear and sadness about sadness. A great deal more about all of this later in future episodes as they occur, um, but it's this fundamental discovery that we feel what we believe. Like I said, more on this later. Have a great day.